So I was in the shower, I was cleaning my ass and making all shirts all sparkly, spanking clean. I'm not the funny one, I'm the pretty one. Cock shots. <laughs> <laughs> I just checked myself out. Beatles, music, wine, and then loop up and get on top. The glory hole is like a, a like dick theater of a magic trick. Which means your pants had better come off. Mama needs playtime. I do this one. We're not sluts. We just love love. Hello everyone, this is Mrs. Atom. And this is Mr. Atom. Welcome to another episode of By the By. Yeah, um, we get to say something we rarely say, which is good morning. I know. <laughs> We're recording this in the morning. Yeah. Um, and We sometimes do on the weekend. That's why we sound a little croaky. Well, I was going to say, I've got a bit of a cold as well. Ooh, it's ooh. nasty winter here. Yes, it's actually thundering outside. What the hell? Anyway. Yeah, we don't get that often. Uh, weird. Um, so, yeah, we've... Uh, we have been so busy. Yeah. And, and we'll talk more about, so this past weekend was Sexpo, uh-huh. and we'll talk more about that later. Um, but one of the things that we noticed at Sexpo that was really big was lube. Yeah, there was lube everywhere. You know, lube is the new dildo, I gotta tell you. <laughs> it seemed like every booth, and there were many booths that were dedicated just to lubes, and to these new lubes, and whatever. So we thought, let's, let's talk about, let's slip right on in. And slide over to the information side of Lou. Uh-huh. Because, <laughs> you know, it seems the nearer your destination, the more you're slip sliding away. Oh, so bad. I know. <laughs> I, I think I'm on fire this morning. And all wow. I have is I've had two sips of coffee. It's great. I'll keep drinking. It's going to get better. <laughs> I need to put glue in my coffee. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> so... What do we want to talk about with the with the lubes? Well, let's start with the basics of lube because everybody knows there's water-based, there's silicon, there's oil. Yes, this yeah. there are. They all have pros and cons. Yep. Okay. Uh, do you want to start with um, – uh, let's start at the bottom and start with oil. Oh, okay. Go with oil. Um, because I figure, you know, realistically, I'd say most – the vast majority of lubes out there are water-based. Mm-hmm. So we can – Go in yep. reverse order. Okay, sure. Um, so, yeah, oil-based lube. It's um, It's got a base of oil. Most commonly things like coconut oil um, or or uh, WD-40. Kidding. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I am, yeah, that's going to be me all day today. Oh, wow. It's going to be great. Um, Fuck a lot, it, people. But they, they typically are a, a natural oil. Um, but one big uh, negative to, to think about when, when using oil-based lubes is the fact that they are not condom-friendly. Yeah. They will break down uh, the latex and cause the, you know, make it much more prone to breakage. What about the non-latex condoms? How do they interact with that? I have to be honest. I don't know. That was one piece of, uh, of, of science that I missed. So basically what you're saying is just if you want to be certain with condoms, use water-based, That's right. right. Better yeah. safe than sorry. Okay. Cool. Or if you don't want to get pregnant, better safe than pregnant. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's true. Um, and you know, and another thing to think about with with oil based lubes is, holy shit, they're a mess to clean up. Yeah. Oil goes. I mean, oil's hard to get it off. Yeah. Uh, they make great massage lotions that can then turn into lube if you're using unprotected or having unprotected sex. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, they can be quite the mess. Mm-hmm. Stained sheets, stained sheets. At least with <laughs> water base. That's when you put a towel down. Well, at least with water base, base it just sort of eva- evaporates away. True, fair enough. But yeah, oil won't evaporate away. Not as much, yeah. Yeah. And silicon lubes. Uh, so they're really good in that they last a long time. And we're just touching on the very basics here because ultimately we're, we want to talk about lube that, that we bought. But, yes. Uh, but yeah, the silicon lubes are, are good because they do have staying power. And so they stick around for a long time. The bad thing is you cannot use them with silicon toys because the silicon molecules will bind to each other. And um, that's when your toys get that kind of tacky, sticky feel to them. Yeah, which is kind of nasty. Yeah. Um, and silicone won't absorb into the skin. Uh, so that's nice as well. It means that the lube stays super slippery and, and uh, lasts a little longer mm-hmm. than, than the, the water-based siblings. Yes. I wonder if they can hear the thunder at home. Yeah, that's a good question. Crazy. Microphone people, tell us. Can you hear the thunder? <laughs> um, 
So that's silicone. Then lastly is water-based, which is really, you can use it everywhere. It's an all-purpose loop. Yeah, it's an all-purpose loop. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it doesn't stain the sheets. You can use it on silicone toys. You can use it with condoms of mm -hmm. any kind. Um, the Really, the real negative to, to water-based lubes is the fact that they don't last very long. And they have a tendency to start to get that tacky feeling. Mm -hmm. um, which I think we'll talk about later. We'll talk about later. Yeah. The other, there is one last category that we didn't mention, which is the hybrid loops. Oh, yes. So there are some that are water silicon hybrid, and they have, most of them have a very small amount of silicon in them. So you, they say you can use them with your silicon toys. I like mine too much to even try. <laughs> um, but supposedly it's a small enough amount that, that it's okay. So, but those, we also have some of those though, depending on, on what we're using them for. Yes. We have a lot of lube. We have <laughs> half a drawer of lube. Yeah. Um, because we are we use a lot of lube. Yeah. And so you know, I guess we could move into why would when, when do you use lube? And like uh, people have heard me say this before, spit isn't a lube. No. I will say, after doing a little bit of research, apparently, officially, spit is a lube. What? I, mean, I know. Do you have to go back on what you've been saying. I do. I mean, I guess you've made a mistake. <laughs> I oh wasn't God. wrong. Can I was mistaken. <laughs> I wasn't. Spit is still not the best lube. It is not the best lube. Um, yeah. But, you know, and the reason it's not the best mood. Blah, blah, mood. <laughs> I'm not in the best mood now. Um, the reason it's not the best lube is because it is mostly water, which means it evaporates away extremely quickly and you've got to have a lot of it. Yeah. So, yeah. Can you use spit? Sure. Should you use spit is still no. Right. I um, agree with that. Look, I started going off on the spit tangent, and I got all confused, and now I don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pout for a second and take a sip of my coffee. <laughs> wow. That was me sipping coffee. That was that was special. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so, okay, so, okay, officially spit is a lube, but, you know, don't use spit. There are, there are many other alternatives yes. out there. So we keep lube on both sides of our bed, and there, it's a little pump bottle. Um, it's uh, by Liquid Silk, which is personally my favorite all-purpose water-based lube. That's our basic go-to, yeah. yeah. Um, I love it for masturbating. Mm -hmm. It's it's great. You reach over, you get a handful of it, and then it's ready to go, and it sticks with you for a very long time. Yeah. Yeah, we like that one. So when you're masturbating with your hands, use lube. When you're masturbating with toys, use lube. Ladies as well, even if you're using the Hitachi wand, um, the, the the lube will, will help mm. make things, you know, better. Yeah, I pretty much – I'm trying to think if I <clears throat> ever don't use lube with toys. Um, basically, the only time I wouldn't use lube with a toy is – like there's a little one that I use sometimes like on my clitoris when we're having sex. Yeah, true. And so I don't at that point just – because admittedly, I don't think about it at that point, and it's little and just kind of slips right in there. <laughs> <laughs> a little something, something slips right in there. Uh, you know, and then the, the other things that you should think about are, are of course, anytime you're doing a, an insertion penis in any orifice, mm -hmm. uh, but inside the condom. So what we found is that you know, when you put a little bit of lube inside the condom, it – Just a little dot. Yeah, just a little yeah. – make the size of a, half of a pea uh, mm -hmm. to a pea size just in the little sperm reservoir, that it it really improves the, the sensation of – it really improves the sensation of sex. It yeah. makes it feel a lot more like you're not wearing a condom mm -hmm. uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm jumping out and um, assuming here uh, because that – What's happening is the the, condo, the lube is going to transfer heat much better than the latex is, and it feels good. <laughs> Look, I'm having trouble completing sentences sentences this morning. <laughs> I'm also, my brain is falling back to sleep. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, so use it inside of a lube inside of a condom, or use it for a massage. Like we said, oil based yeah. lubes are great for massage. You can technically use water based lubes for massage, but silicone lubes you can they're you know, much better, yeah, yeah, for that. And then the, of course the oil based ones if you're going for massage as well. Yeah. 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 So should we talk about the lubes that we bought? Sure. At Sexpo? We can. Do you yes. want to talk about something else first? Well, it just hit me. That another great thing that I keep forgetting, that we keep forgetting actually to actively do, is that silicone-based lubes are great for shower sex. Because water-based lubes yeah. wash away so quickly with water, silicone doesn't. That's Again, it's the uh, it doesn't absorb into your body, and it also... 
You know? mm -hmm. So if you want to have shower sex or pool sex, silicone or oil. Yeah, yeah, those are the best for that, for sure. Yeah. Sure, all right. All right, let's talk about the lubes that we bought at Sexpo. Do now, we admittedly, we have not tried any of these out because <laughs> Sexpo just ended. Yes, like Sunday, Yeah. and it's Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah, so give us time. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll try them out, and we'll give you reviews, but we'll talk about them because they're really interesting. Mm -hmm. So number one. Do we want to start with the pH balanced for your body? We can start with the pH balanced for your body. So there was a company called Yes, mm -hmm. uh, and apparently they do a lot of organic style lubes. Um, interesting. I mean, the the lady was very informed. Yeah. I, I, I felt a little sorry for her because she seemed a bit, at times, like overwhelmed with, oh my God, I can't believe we're at Sexpo. Yeah. Not, not because she was at Sexpo, just like... I really can't believe we're at Sexpo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she goes, we normally do, you know, health and body. And uh, I'm, a, I'm sort of imagining she was, it was the whole foods of lube. Right. Um, so all natural, really kind of a cool product. Mm. Um, specifically, they had the Yes WB. Yes, the Yes WB, uh, which was pH balanced for the vagina. Yeah, and the Yes But. But yes. But yes. I think sorry. it was but yes. Yes, but. One or the other. But it's pH balanced for the rectum. Yeah. So then my question was, well, what are the pHs of both? So the queen <laughs> of science over here now has a TED talk on pH, the pH of your orifices. No, it's not that in depth. <laughs> You've been researching this forever, which I'm excited to hear. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really like, let's – so we were like, okay, what is the pH of all these different lubes and, and yeah. how does this how does this change? And, and how – yeah, how does that affect you? And, and when they say pH balance for the vagina, you know, like I've, we know people who are more pr prone to, to thrush and so certain lubes are better for them than others. But the question is why? Um, and so basically what I found is that the pH of the vagina is roughly 4, so it's a okay. bit acidic. Okay. Uh, it is. I mean, it varies, of course, person to person. It also varies based on where you are in your menstrual cycle, if you have any infections, if you've been through menopause. Uh, if you're trying to conceive, you might, you'll need lube with a higher pH. So there's a lot of factors that go into it. But generally, the, the pH of the vagina is around 4, which, to put that in perspective, is somewhere between the pH of vinegar and coffee. Wow. So if I start calling you, you're such an acidic bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, um, yeah. Cool. So. And then the rectum is closer to neutral pH. Most of the sources I saw had the pH of the rectum right around 7.5 or so, so it was fairly neutral. Some said up to 9, so again, that could just be very person dependent. So if you look at me and you go, God, you're such a basic bitch. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm appreciating this TED Talk. I'm appreciating all this work that you've done so far. It's, it's loaded me with jokes. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So the pH of the rectum is, is a lot more uh, um, like your favorite lube, saliva. <laughs> Wait, so. But not as much as seawater. Does that mean so. if you put your anus and your vagina together, you would uh -huh. curdle? Because isn't that what happens when you put a base and an acid together? You get like. Ooh. A, a, let's a not, not let's not try that because I'm not even sure how you would physically do that. I'm not a scientist, <laughs> but I had sex with one last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the question then is why why does the pH of the lube matter based upon the pH of your body? Um, so if you have lube that is pH balanced for the vagina, and you want to use it for anal sex. It's going to be a lot more acidic. It can really sting. Oh, yeah. Have you had that happen? You know, it's funny because the question always is, which part is stinging? Is it the lube or the fact that somebody's giant cock well, is going in your ass? when you're just lubing up and you're just, like, you know, moisturizing beforehand. Um, I can think of a couple of times where I'm like, well, this isn't pleasant, but again. But because, we often use anal lubes for anal play. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, would, I would assume... Um, that that the anal lubes that we had, they are specifically for anal play. Yeah. Um, no, I can't. I mean, yes, maybe. I don't know. Uh, again, it, it's hard to determine whether it's the it's the lubricant or, or the, the fact object. that I'm, you know, maybe jamming my finger way down deep in my ass so right. that I'm lubing the inside of myself. Right. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. So maybe. Okay. Yeah. 
So if it's too acidic, then so how is a coffee acidic. or vinegar? Yeah. Uh, and arguably, though, I have never inserted coffee or vinegar into my anus, so yeah, I can't tell you that. if it feels the same. But that's science, right there, right? I'm it, science. It sure. So if we insert coffee and it doesn't burn, and we insert the loop, yeah, see, it's science. Uh, yeah, I would still not suggest putting vinegar or coffee in your anus. No, yeah, that's how people sometimes end up at the. <laughs> Emergency room when they're trying to science and put things in the anus. <laughs> Sir, I how it's did not you get object, the shampoo but, bottle? Yeah. Yes. I was sciencing. <laughs> science, is, science hurts, bitch. <laughs> you basic bitch. <laughs> Don't try to go doctor on me. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so Touche. Then, fair enough. Right. And so if the pH is too high for the vagina particularly, then... <laughs> then that can cause uh, yeast infections, bacterial vaginosis, itchiness. What is vaginosis? Bacterial vaginosis. It's a it's a overgrowth of, well, it's natural bacteria that you have in the vagina, but it's an overgrowth of it. So then it's just an infection and it gets kind of itchy and stinky and stuff. Wow. Yeah. I mean, generally you want to keep that area clean and balanced and not have any kind of infection types of things. No, well, yeah. yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to say doy, but uh, yes, I am... Firmly yeah. away from the infected vagina yeah. thing. Which is why we like the the After Dark Intimate Wipes, because those are pH balanced, so they can get used. Wow, that's right. They yeah. are. Yeah. They don't sting my ass either. No. See? There you go. Uh, so that's why it's really important to have the right pH of lube, which is, again, when the Yes Company had the WB for the vagina and then the Butt Yes for the rectum, it was kind of like, oh, that's, you know, I mean, we all know that there's anal lubes, but... I just never really thought about the difference being pH. Um, but then I also found out that another important factor in them besides pH, which, you know, when you think about it, it's kind of like, okay, that makes sense, is the osmolality. I'm sorry. It's like the wiz- <laughs> I, I saw the wizard of osmolality. <laughs> so um, it's basically, um, I'm trying to think of an easy way to explain it without going all science-y. But it's, please, test me on my science So if you have your cells, okay. you know, like in your mucus lining in I your like body. To, that's where I like to keep my cells. Uh-huh. And then you have your lube, and okay. you put one on top of the other. Okay. How much water is transferred between the two? So if one is saltier, the, say saltier, uh-huh, but it's so, also other molecules and whatever. But let's say saltier for general purpose. is If one's saltier than the other, it sucks the moisture in and out. So uh, it's basically yeah. how... How happy are they sitting together without trying to, to take from one another? Okay. Does that make sense? So yes. Yes. Okay. So you've got, let me see if I understand. <laughs> so do, do, do the cells in the lube live in harmony or are they trying to like steal water from each other? Oh, okay. So yeah. So they're trying to steal water from each other. That makes, yeah. ooh, I can see how that could be bad. Yeah. Because one would leave you all good and one would leave you all ooh. Yeah. So if a, if a lube That's is- That's science talk, people. Right. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> my god i feel like you're podcasting with homer this morning i do too <laughs> sorry i'm trying i'm trying to be smart it's uh, it hurts so yeah if, and I, th- I think most loops go the other way but if it if a loop has too low of the osmolality so if it's hyper hypo osmotic then it's it's taking the the cells are getting too much water from it and they're going to burst and if you're trying to conceive then that means that your sperm oh. does as well so it kills the sperm Wow. So that, Without a spermicide. It's just – or does spermicide well, make it as – It's not like us. they just instantaneously burst, I mean. But it does – you know, it will wait, happen. Wait, wait. Are we talking like Monty Python? Like, but sir, it's only wafer theme. Sure. We'll Fuck go off. With yes. I can't eat another bite. We'll go with yes. And they just kind of explode all over the place? Yeah. Yeah. You know, on a molecular level, we're terrifying. Uh-huh. Okay. Sorry. Please continue. But more common if loops are not um, – Isoosmotic, so if they're not equal, more common is hyperosmotic, where they that's too high, and that's when the lube can feel really slippery and it pulls moisture from the cells. So it's like which makes sucking it feels it good. It. I mean, it feels good, right? But then ultimately, it's going to dry up the cells. They're going to slough off, um, and that leaves both the mucous membrane, like you know, in your vagina, and you more vulnerable for infections like yeast infections, STIs, things like that. Gotcha. Because you don't have that nice protective layer. So that's why it's important not only have good, the, a good pH for the surface that you're using, the orifice that you're using, but also osmolality, um, which I didn't – I looked up osmolality of some loops, which, of course, many don't really release. But some of them – some of them were wicked, wicked high. And I was like, holy shit. Meaning they would leave you really dry. Yeah. 
So there you go. Yeah. Ladies, gentlemen, if you feel really dry after sex and you're using lube, it's not just in your head. And it's not just the <laughs> sex. It could be just your lube. Yeah. Checks what's in your tube. Yeah. And you should also just look at general ingredients in all too, because you want things to be as as natural and happy as can be. Ooh, later um, I have a list of natural things you can use around the house. Oh, loop. good. Okay. It's not that's good. exciting. No, no it's, it's, it's weird. not exciting. Yeah. All right. Do you want to try and guess the pH of some common loops? Do I? See if you can get them. Yeah, sure. I'm not going to because I'll try. Yes, I will try. Mm-hmm. Can I just say acidic or not acidic? What's neutral? Seven. 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 God, I am a terrible scientist. Um. So this was. Interesting, because when I was trying to look it up, there again, it's hard to find pHs of all the loops, and there's so many different variations within, you know, like you have your water-based, you have your silicones, and, and now a lot of companies do have the pH balance for women kind of thing, or, or the anal lube, mm-hmm. so it is very specific. Um, but let's start with Astroglide TTC. What does TTC stand for? TTC is trying to conceive. Uh-huh. So it's a loop that you would use if you're trying to get pregnant. So I'm going to guess that that's not – that's hyperosmotic. pH. We're talking pH here, bit. Oh, damn it. I was <laughs> – okay. Uh, I'm going to say it's closer to vagina. What was that number? Four? So I'm going to say five. Um, no. <laughs> it's 7.4. You're trying to conceive, so you want to be sperm friendly. And the sperm Wait, is, is the vagina not sperm friendly? Well, clearly not. It's very acidic, right? Wait, that is weird. Shouldn't the vagina so be sperm friendly? Well, you're trying to make it more basic, you know, and make it more sperm friendly. So wouldn't you add a higher pH to try and balance that? Well, I guess it depends on the pH of sperm. Seven. It's neutral. More oh. neutral. See, us gentlemen always try to stay in neutral territory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Man. that's a funny one. <laughs> Yeah, if I did not have an expensive microphone next to me, I think I would have might have had a, a mug of tea on my face. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! Uh, so then we'll go with Precede, which is also another one. Which I so I hate this name, I know. and I love it at the same time. So it's Precede, P R E S W E D. Yeah, Again, it's a- <sighs> and it's a it's a birth and babies one, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, nine, eight, eight, seven point four. Ooh, that was closer than the last time at least. Yeah. Uh, what about gun oil? Gun oil. I've actually used that before. Yeah. That's a um, silicone base, right? Mm-hmm. Um, again, I have no idea. Uh, it's typically anal, so I'm going to say well, more typically anal, so I'm going to say it's pretty basic. So four. Wait, um, that's the wrong way. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> Your brain is clearly not working this morning. <laughs> I don't understand pH balance. <laughs> Uh, it's 5.5. So it's slightly okay. more basic than the vagina, but not by heat. It's not as far as the rectum. Okay. Yeah. Do we have any like acidities of things around the house that I might know? What's the acidity of lemon juice? I have no idea, but that's going to be really acidic. Okay. I would guess in the two to three range. But and good. bleach is like 13, right? Don't use bleach as a lube. Oh God, no. <laughs> that's not how you bleach your asshole. Just making that very clear. Yeah. Uh, yeah, lemon juice, too. I was pretty close. Between two and three. You're smart. Yeah. Good lucky guesser. Uh, what about liquid silk? We like that one. Oh, yeah. That, I'm going to say that one's uh, close to the vagina. It's going to be five. 5.26. Wow. Yeah. yeah. You're getting better at this. I am. <laughs> I still don't really know what it means, but I'm all right. <laughs> uh, what about the Yes H2O, the Yes brand, the water one? Is that the different than the WB? Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, well, it's gonna, I'm going to say it's close to neutral. Seven. Four. It's still for women. Oh, damn it. Damn it's all about the woman here. I, well, I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Pure woman nude. Oh, f- 4.6. 4.3. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about a really, really common one? KY jelly. Oh, that's, I'm going to be for everyone. So it's going to be neutral. 7.1. Uh-uh, 4.55. So every, all these are going towards the lady, yeah. which I good for them. But again, the osmolality, when I looked that up, we, there, again, there wasn't just much information on many of them, but um, some of them were super high, which was just really surprising. Which means it really leaves your skin dry, yeah. right? Which makes sense because when I was a kid, that's what I used to masturbate with was the KY jelly stuff. And a kid, you know, 20, yeah. um, half my age ago. <laughs> and I, I always noticed that, you know, it'd be like, oh, my God, my, my, my junk's so dried out. 
Yeah. And worse was the balls. The balls would get all dry and mm-hmm. sometimes skin flaky. Mm-hmm. Not pleasant. Yeah. See? That's when I started masturbating with um, like hand lotion, oh, okay. which I'm assuming was probably just as bad, but in a different way. Right. Yeah. But it was all soft and smooth. Oh. Yes. Is that why it's all nice and smooth now? Yes, it is. Yeah. So basically, it's just important to use the bright lube. Don't cheap out. Use what you need. Have multiple lubes, different situations. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, so what do we, where, where are we going next with this? Because I got um, stuff to talk about. Okay, let's talk about your stuff, and then we can, then we can talk about what we bought, because I want to get to that. Okay. So I was just going to talk about some of the lubes that we have that we use commonly, mm-hmm. which... Uh, you know, one of my favorites is the backdoor relaxing anal glide. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's a very, 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 very important to remember not to use a lube that uh, has a like a numbing agent, mm-hmm. but a relaxant is different. So numbing agents means you can't mean you can't feel pain, and you want to make sure, especially in in, in your back door. If something's wrong, you want to know exactly. Yeah. You really want to pardon the pun, pull out of this situation yeah. if it starts to hurt. But uh, the like the back door by Pure, they use something called jojoba jojoba extracts, J O J O B A, which all they do is makes the skin nice and soft and then relax the sphincter. It relaxes the muscles just a bit, not a lot. I mean, it's not like you're gonna yeah, I can't hold it in anymore kind of thing. <laughs> uh, and then they have a spray that's very similar that I think has some kind of um, menthol or some oil that makes it tingle and feel good. Hmm. So that's one of our favorites. They do make it. They do make it in silica, both silicone and in um, water based. And typically, we use the water based. Yeah. I like the water based a, a little better. There's also one called Analyze, uh-huh. um, but I think, it, but I don't like it because it's spelled analyze. I always think. <laughs> I was thinking that Arrested Development where he becomes the analyst therapist and when you read it it says he goes I'm an analyst and it's spelled anal rapist uh-huh. <laughs> anyway and that's what you think of with that's that what one. I think of when I see that one so yeah so I don't buy that one right so it's funny how marketing is yeah uh, so another thing uh, another lubes or other lubes that we use quite often are Joe mm-hmm. Joe lubes J-O yep and we use those primarily because they taste amazing. Yeah, they have all the flavored lubes. Yes. Yeah. So they're water-based. They actually have a cocktail list. Like you can make cocktails with their lube, which I think is hilarious. And admittedly, we've never done that. Yeah. We, we should probably try it and just see what it's like. Mm-hmm. Next time we have the gentleman over, I'll make a cocktail. Okay. And I won't tell him it's got lube in it. Right. Hopefully he won't listen to this tomorrow. Right. Damn it. Anyway, so. Uh, but... At the at Sexpo for the last few Sexpos, mm-hmm. they've had an ice cream machine. And you so you get a little cup of vanilla ice cream. You put whatever flavored lube on top that you want. It's really delicious. It's bizarre as hell, yeah. but it is actually literally delicious. And mm. I, 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 people at home are going, "Wait, what?" And it's true. It, it's, yep. I love it. Safe to eat. I'm a big fan of of the Jo. So okay, I did good. read, however, somewhere online that. If you eat an excessive amount of lube, it can cause uh, um, distress. Right, right. Well, I think it's A, everything in moderation, and B, lube should not be a part of your regular diet. It should be if you're going down on someone and you happen to ingest some, it's not terrible for your body. Right. I think it's – I mean, come on, common sense people. It is kind of funny though because <laughs> – you know the the Joe lubes and their different flavors. Some flavors to me scream sex. Yeah. You know, like like chocolate and and chocolate mint and mint. Um, and you know, I know they have um, like pina colada, which I even get that. That's that's on the fringe of sex. But you know, and we've got cherry, which mm-hmm. starts to be on that same as pina colada. It's on the fringe. It's sort of sexy, but it's not quite. Mm-hmm. But then they have flavors like tangerine, watermelon, and. Uh, to me, it's like bubble gum. It is. It's watermelon is not a, a flavor that I would think sexy, and yeah, I'm kind of curious what people mm-hmm. at home would think. Mm-hmm. We're not peeing. That's the outside. That's still raining. It's rain. Yeah. So if you hear water, that's it's what's It's raining happening. all week. Blah. Or maybe we're peeing over the next hour. <laughs> uh, so, <clears throat> so that's that's those are two of the lubes that we use quite often. Of course, like I said, we have liquid silk that sits next to our bed that gets mm-hmm. used at least daily. Sometimes, you know. Seven to eight times a day. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. What about household items that you could use? Oh, yes. Food? So I, 
I, I love these. These are the best homemade lube alternatives, which crack me up. You're going to, yeah. The first one you might, you might expect, coconut oil. Yeah. Coconut oil is great. If you've ever seen it in the store, if you bring it, once you bring it home, it, it, it's, it's kind of solidy. So it's um, sort of like Crisco, which is also a, which always, let, let me tangent it for a second. Saks Leather down here in, in Sydney, and apparently most of the fetish stores mm-hmm. now are carrying Crisco, uh, which is what hydrogenated oil, it's it's like vegetable oil, and you fry it in. I mean, look, my great-grandmother always made biscuits and fried chicken with it. Yeah, I made banana bread with it. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. But now they're selling it for as a, as a sex lubricant because apparently it is amazing for fisting. Right. So so we cannot buy Crisco in Australia, or at least in Sydney. We cannot buy it at the regular grocery store. We go to the fetish store. Yes. So when I'm going to make biscuits or, <laughs> or, or going to make my you know my grandmother's fried chicken, I go and get the Crisco from Saks. And they look at me and they're like, back again? I'm like, making fried chicken. <laughs> They're like, right, that's what you call it. Is that what you call sex? <laughs> You're doing it wrong, man. You're doing it wrong. Uh, like, live, wait till you taste my 11 herbs and spices, baby. <laughs> so, but yeah. I will say that if you're going to do coconut oil, make sure that it's the unrefined virgin coconut oil. Yes, that's important. That's yes. so important. Um, it does it, it does have antifungal properties, so it does lower the, re- the risk of yeast infections, mm-hmm. which I thought that was kind of cool. It's like, oh, you can just like that. Uh, but remember, it's an oil, so it does fuck with your condoms. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So because same thing like olive oil, avocado oil, those yeah. things you can use as well. Yeah. yeah. Which olive oil makes a great massage lotion. Yeah. But yeah, I like co- the smell of coconut oil better. Mm-hmm. Uh, aloe vera. So again, it it's you use it on burns, so it's it's much uh, it's sensitive. It's good for sensitive parts of the body. You would only want to use an aloe vera gel, gel that's one hundred percent aloe vera. Um. But and it's safe to to use with condoms. Me personally, I know whenever I've used aloe vera, it must have a high osmosity, osmosis, whatever, because it's it always leaves my skin kind of dry. But maybe and you're just, just me. talking about like normal skin, not as a loop. Have you ever used it as a loop? No, I've never used it as a loop. Yeah, I never have yeah, either. I would never thought to. No, I wouldn't. Um, neither have I used this next one as a loop. But is but that? apparently, I'm apparently, it makes a really good substitute for lube. Okay. Uh, thanks to its high protein content and high pH value, okay. uh, it will you know so it helps to treat yeast infections. Okay. Plain or Greek yogurt? I would never have thought to use yogurt as a lube. Me neither. Yeah. If but, I w- if I was low on lube and I was looking around the house like what do I have to use? I would never go for yogurt. Yeah. But it does bring new meaning to the phrase "fruit on the bottom." <laughs> Or, hey, you want to yo play? <laughs> I mean, it works on so many levels. I just, it makes me happy. So, yeah, yogurt. I, right. I gotta be honest, I think that would be disgusting. Can you, I can't imagine masturbating with yogurt and looking down and seeing this white. I actually saw her like Crisco. Anyway. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Um, so, egg whites. Oh. So, okay. it, it's. Egg whites can be used as a lubricant um, or while having sex. What about salmonella? Well, some people believe that uh, egg whites can help with contraception. It is important to use pasteurized eggs because the pasteurization process will make sure that there's no... Hi, I'm Sam and I'm Ella and together we're Sam and Ella. (laughs) Yeah, we don't want to visit them. No. No. Uh, Or visit from them. So you got petroleum jellies, things like Vaseline can be used as a lube. And doesn't have a lot of harmful effects, uh, and lasts for a long time. But it's that's the Vaseline is something that can stain. I can tell you, if little Brad, young Bradford, fifteen year old Bradford, can mm-hmm. tell you that he stained his his sheets with some Vaseline that he found in the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so glad we've moved past that. Me too, because that was a. I mean, it was like rolling around. This is what happens when you're 15, you're masturbating. You're rolling around the bed, and there's like a penis-shaped stamp. It becomes a stamp. It's like, <laughs> and you're looking at it, and you're like, I'm going to have to wash, learn how, I'm, I'm going to have to learn how to wash the sheets. <laughs> like, sorry, Ma. <laughs> yeah. Well, the things my poor Ma saw. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, and then like you said, just natural oils, like whatever you would cook with, you could technically use as a lube. Mm-hmm. Just make sure that you don't use it with uh, L condoms, which is, you know, Right. Uh, also, storing lubes. It's very important oh, yeah. to store them in room temperature. And this is something I didn't know, but I learned while researching. 
condoms have a shelf life of a year. And Con- once lube. they're, I'm lube. sorry, lube has a, I did know condoms had a shelf life. Lube has a shelf life of a year. Mm-hmm. And once you open it, it, they, it's, it degrades, degrades much faster. That's interesting because I'll have to go look at the lubes that we have, but I know some of them, like the expiration date, I'm curious as, cause I thought some of them had an expiration date longer than a year, but it could be just once it's open. But as long as it's on like the oh, store maybe. shelf, yeah, it's yeah. fine. I don't know. I'll have to go look now. I'm going to go yeah. do a, a perusal of our loops. But <laughs> yeah. that is good to know that it's a year. So, Although I don't think any of our loops stay around that long. But, uh, yeah, no. But you never know. know. Yeah. But t- like, t- like, like you might expect, keep them away from direct sunlight, mm-hmm. which is, you know, keep them in, uh, away from heat. You can store them in the fridge and they'll last a little longer. And plus then you'll, once you squirt them on somebody, it's like, ooh, ooh a little bit of cold play. Yeah. You know? Not the band. <laughs> uh, I was trying to sing the scientist, but I just my brain isn't. <laughs> so all of that came about because we bought the Yes Lube at Sexpo. I know you buy, and, and it, I mean, just as soon as you know, she was like, "Oh, pH balanced for the vagina and for the rectum," and and we've of course seen that with lubes before, but never, I never stopped to really think about what are the implications of that, and what if it's not? Yeah, yeah, you know, because a lot of times you just think, "Oh, lube is lube," and you know, sure, some are better than others, but. I guess, you know, a lot of times we just think that it's the chemical properties of it. Yeah. and Which, I'm sure, pH and osmolality, whatever they all are, but it, I would think more just the ingredients. Well, it's funny because I never even really thought about what, what is in my lube. Yeah. You know, it's just something that never it's, – it's just lube. And I, I know fundamentally it can't all be the same. Yeah. But, you know, you see the different brands and you're like, oh, it's, it's, it's Coke and Pepsi. It's, it's a little bit different depending on taste, but basically it's the same product. <clears throat> But in researching it, like this one, this is something that I, I found that I thought was fascinating. So this is a, a, a warning applied to lubes uh, that says, and I'm going I'm to quote this directly, um, avoid anything that might contain the spermicide nanoxanol-9. Nanoxanol-9. Yeah. Nanoxanol so it's a spermicide. And according to a CDC spokeswoman, Jessica Fricky, F-R-I-C-K-E-Y, it boils down to this. Studies have shown that N9 can cause genital lesions and damage the rectal lining, providing a possible entry point for HIV and other sexually sexually transmitted infections. So, it's just things that you might not even think yeah. about. So just be aware of if you have a spermicidal lube. lube. So yeah. yeah, look at it a little closer than just a passing glance. Yeah. Dum dum dum. And have multiple lubes for multiple purposes. That's right. Was there something else I wanted to talk about? I don't think I think that was all I had. We can talk about what we what we bought. Besides yeah. the yes. Yeah. Which took us way off on a tangent, but it was it's important and I think it's I find it really fascinating. Because there are different kinds of lubes. Real quick, yeah. there are, just just as a side, you've got the warming lube, which I did find that could have um, capsaicin in it, which is what makes hot peppers hot, that, yeah. that molecule that makes hot peppers hot, which fascinates me. Mm-hmm. I mean, that makes sense. What a way to warm something up. Let's use yeah. You know, a jalapeno. That would be awesome. Um, and then you've got things like the the lube that has gold flex in it. Oh, yeah. Um, for electroplay. Uh-huh. So it, it becomes a, a transmitter. So when you electric, put, put um, electricity in one place, it spreads out. Sometime I, at some point, I want to try that. Yeah. I want to get one of the ones that we can, like, do the tingle. Because right now, we've just got the pain one. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Electrostimulation. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. So that's all I had on uh-huh. on the lubes. And when I dove down my internet Google rabbit hole, that's everything that I learned about right. lube. Should we talk about the, the other one that we bought? The little balls? Yes. 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 So uh, there were a few stalls at Sexpo this year that had the, I don't know what to call them, but they're like little balls of capsules. lube. Capsules. Yeah, capsules of lube that then dissolve in the body. And uh, I'm assuming that it's a water-based coating on the outside. To then dissolve? I would assume know? so. I, I, you know, it the packaging is really unclear. Um, there are a lot of big words that I'm going to assume that that one of those big words near the end of the ingredients list is exactly what's holding it all in. But it's 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 basically when you feel it, it feels like a gel cap. So uh, players at home, the what I would compare it to, honestly in both shape and size is uh nyquil ta- nyquil uh cold oh yeah things. yeah yeah i would i would go with that yeah so, but they're they're interesting so you put them into the body and uh it does say with the heat of the body 
that it dissolves shortly. So it's, yeah, kind of interesting because the ones that we, we've got a couple of them to try. So they had, I think most of them have oils in them. Which, but didn't they have one with water-based stuff inside? They did have one with yeah. water-based stuff inside. We didn't take one of those. No. Um, look, the lady was really excited uh, for us because us being bi, she wanted to give us the relaxing comfort. So their mm-hmm. m- main for uh, main intention is anal play. Uh, so, but the thing to remember is like the main competition competition the main composition of this uh, is sunflower seed oil. Yeah. So. Again, that means no condoms. Right. They are not condom free. But, but, and, and what I'm looking at this for, at least to try it and see, is you know when we do pegging, yes, that kind of thing, and uh, not just with toys, but often with the toys, we'll use old expired condoms just to make it easier cleanup. And with that, you know, if it breaks down a little bit, not the yeah. end of the world. But you um, know, oil based loops are safe with silicone toys. Silicone true. toys. So that's a plus. Yeah. Uh, so we wouldn't have to use a condom. It's just that it's easy cleanup. Exactly. So, it's just yeah. a, you know, a little easier cleanup. Yeah. But, yeah, so I'm curious to, to try these out and see how they actually go, both in how they dissolve, how they feel when they're dissolving, how long it lasts, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. yeah. So, but, but we saw those. There were a couple of stalls that had these little dissolvable ball things and gel capsules. Yeah, that seemed like the big thing this year, and yeah. which I think is funny because it's been a big thing for a while in Europe. Mm-hmm. So I guess it's just now moving over here. Just making it, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so we got some Brazilian balls. which. <laughs> What a name. And then the other thing that we got. Uh-huh. <laughs> but the company that apparently won best stall for yeah. Sexpo this year, Clitter Lube. Say that again for everyone. Clitter Lube. <laughs> <laughs> and would you like to explain this? So it's a, again, it's a little capsule. That's full of lube. Uh-huh. That is a water-based lube, so it's condom-friendly. Okay. And also, glitter. Mm-hmm. Yes, with a G, glitter. But their name is Clitter, which I think is hilarious. <laughs> so the idea is you insert this capsule vaginally or anally, and you wait 15 to 30 minutes, and when you start fucking and you look down, you see glitter. It's like you're fucking a unicorn. Like you're fucking a unicorn. <laughs> so, look, it's kind of funny because she had a couple of jars of it out that you could play with, and um, and of course, everybody laughs at me. All of the all of the lube people laugh at me because the first thing they do is they've always squirt it in your hands or they put mm-hmm. it in your hands, and the first thing I do is I rub it between my fingers and then I stick my fingers in my mouth because let's be realistic, you're gonna get some of it in your mouth, and I want to make sure that it does not taste like disgusting. Yeah, like yeah. gross. And the uh, side tangent, the poor Joe lady, when I was there uh, on the first day, one of the lubes that she wanted me to try was an all-natural lube. I was like, oh, cool. So I put it in my mouth. She's like, actually, it's not intended to eat. I was like, well, then you're not doing it right. And she kind of laughed. She goes, she goes, it's not intended to eat. It's not like our flavored one. She goes, you can, you know, taste it. She yeah. goes, but just it's not intended to eat. I was like, right. Uh, so, yeah, it's um, it's glitter lube. Yeah. And it, it felt pretty good. It was nice and tacky, uh-huh. which for anal play I like. Uh, it was clearly a water-based lube because she squirts a little bit of water as well in your fingers, and it spreads it out. What I don't understand is that after after I wiped it off, all the glitter was gone. So how is that possible? Because we all know glitter is – Glitter is like an STI in itself. That it just sticks around. It sticks around and it tends to go everywhere. Yeah. And, you know, you hug somebody after you've touched glitter three weeks ago and now they have glitter. And, you know, the struggle is real. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, so what I want to try with that one, should I tell the world? Yes, I tell the world. Okay, so I want to make this clear. People are going to think, oh, Bradford, this was your idea. This was your idea. This was not my idea. This one came up with this at Sexpo, and she was like, you should have seen, like, you could literally see the light bulb ping <laughs> over your head when you when you realized that we were going to do this. Yes, and I actually don't think it's going to turn out as spectacularly as I want it to. It's not. But that's okay. I still want to do it. In your mind, it's <laughs> yeah, going to work. It's in my mind, it's going to work. Uh, but yeah, so my first, sadly, my first thought on <laughs> what to do with the the little clitter lube capsule things um, was to, to try and make a unicorn fart. So you go out for a good, nice Mexican meal, lots of beans, get all gassy, then you insert it, and then you see if you can fart some glitter. 
I realize it's loop, so it's not going to do that. But it, I still like to to dream in my mind that you can, you know, do unicorn farts. It's going to be great. Yeah. It's not going to be great. <laughs> we are going to film it, but it's going to be. It's not going to be great. No. No. Um. But that is interesting though, because I didn't realize that the glitter wiped off like that. It so, was yeah. Huh. All right. Yeah. I don't know. It was magic. Like basically, just wiped off their hands, and I looked down. and was like, "Where'd the glitter go?" Which makes me think, why it won't aerosolize. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't. I, I don't think it will because it's it's if it's in the lube and part of it, then it's not going to. If you really want to do that, we can get some really fine glitter. But yeah. I don't want to have to be cleaning up glitter off the, around the apartment. So we will have to go to somebody else's house. We can do it at OSS. <laughs> Lawrence, be like, "What you guys doing? Glitter farting?" <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, what? Well, poor Lawrence. We're making unicorn gas. <laughs> Shit and rainbows, baby. Poor Lawrence. What if you'd let us come in again? No. What no. if we just went in on, you know, one of the quiet slow days, like Thursday night? Well, I was thinking on one of the nights like New Year's where there's already glitter oh everywhere. Oh, my God. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, five, four, three. <laughs> Damn. She went off early. Focus. We we can do this. We can do this. We're in the home stretch of the podcast, <laughs> and the people at home now. I think I need more sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't cry, honey. It's okay. It's okay. Someday you'll fart like a unicorn. I know, baby. <laughs> it's tough luck. So yeah, um, yeah. So that we'll we'll let you know how that turns out. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> I can't look at you. <laughs> God, if I had a nickel for every time a woman has said that to me, I can't fucking look at you. <laughs> Uh, so yeah <laughs> okay so yeah we're gonna leave all the laughs in <clears throat> okay um what else do we have over there in your massive list um, of of lube ted talk did we did we get any other lubes i think those were the main ones that we looked at those, those were the main ones that we looked at we, i feel like there was another one well we were gonna go back to jo and get i wanted to look at nipple plumper oh yeah so yeah. jo has a has a nipple plumper that i really wanted to look at and i wanted to put on your nipples because i mean let's be realistic most of the listeners at home enough. have seen your nipples you've got big nipples i mean yeah. and i love grr. but you know your nipples are like the size of my um the tip of my pinky so yeah. i mean they're good size like little lima beans yeah. uh so, um edamame because huh. you gotta roll them around in your mouth it's yeah. a little, little different shape but sure well, yeah but size okay uh, but yeah, and they're just as tasty. A little bit of salt, a little bit of lube. <laughs> anyway, so, but they make nipple plumpers. And I was like, wow, if you had your nipples plumped, it would be like having breasts on breasts. And so then I was like, well, if that happened, maybe we could do it again. And you would have like little snowmen on your chest instead of breasts. Oh, God. <laughs> you know, the big and the medium and then small on the end. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So you plump the nipple, plump, yeah. plump. Yeah. Just keep plump, plump, plump. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. keep plump, plump, plump. <laughs> how the rappers do it so then i was like well if nipple plumping works what happens if i put it on my junk does that make my junk plump um i i don't know i could use a penis plump i don't i'm not sure it works that way but i don't really know which is different than a than a penis pump Uh yeah Uh so yeah that's what i was thinking all right yeah maybe put on my testicles and watch my testicles grow right (laughs) it's like planting little seeds (laughs) Oh, I plant seeds everywhere. <laughs> Look, I, I got to be honest. I probably wouldn't walk on our carpet barefoot. Just saying. Right. Okay. <laughs> I love that you look around. <laughs> Just looking for glitter. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so that was that was the only other thing that I really thought of. Joe had, like, their booth was massive. They have so many products. They do. They yeah, do. Yeah, such a variety, too. And it's it's good, but it's almost like you're drowning in choice. Yeah. You're like, what what flavor would you want? We have 30. Yeah. They're basically the Baskin and Robbins of lube. Which is good, like, in a place like that, because there's there's people there who know the products and they can kind of help you. Right. Um, but if you were to just, you know, go into a store on your own, now, granted, not, most stores don't carry the entire J.O. line. Right. Um, but if you were to go into a store that has a lot and you're just kind of like, I don't know. But that happens with lubes anyway. You walk into the store and you're like, okay, there's so many lubes. Help. Which is why 
hopefully you go to a place with knowledgeable staff and just talk to them and ask them. Yeah, I would definitely yeah. not purchase my lube from a grocery store or a, or a chemist or a pharmacist, something like that. You want to go somewhere where you can actually put, put your fingers in it and, you know, you can – yeah, you do. And <laughs> – you can sort of, you know, squish it around and move it around and see what it feels like so that you know a little bit better about what it's going to feel like on you. And, you know, laughing and jokes aside, I'll, I'll squirt some in my hand and then stroke my other hand, two fingers, like it's a penis. You know, just to see what does it feel like uh, well, on, on my hands. So, yeah, I would yeah. highly recommend trying to play with your lube before you purchase your yeah, lube. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Hmm. Um. <laughs> well, this this hour just slid right on by. Oh, terrible! Yeah, terrible. I didn't think we'd have so much to say about lubes. Well, you know, we but we can rant and talk about anything forever. Yeah, and I feel like we just kind of barely scratched the surface, but it's enough to you know, yeah. Yeah. So you're just gonna let just, it slide? Just leave it about. Yeah, let it slide. Yeah, that's it, babe. <laughs> so, so, well, you know, we're slip sliding away. Okay, mm -hmm. I'll stop. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll wrap it up then. Okay. Okay. So, if uh, actually before we wrap it up, oh, we have a word from our not sponsors, oh, that's right? But our friends over at Life on the Swing Set. Life on the Swing Set is heading to paradise for the seventh time, and once again, we're taking over Desire Resort, Riviera Maya, in Cancun, Mexico. With this year's hosts, me, Cooper, Ginger, Dylan, JV and Shara from Ending the Sexual Dark Age, and author, podcaster, and feminist porn filmmaker, Tristan Terramino, our takeover allows us to mold the resort in our geeky, sexy, and inclusive image with orgies, classes about pegging, flogging and fisting, theme nights, a full dungeon night, naked karaoke, mutual masturbation, and massages. From November 3rd through the 10th, 2018, this beautiful, all-inclusive resort will be full of sexy swing setters from every letter in the LGBTQA spectrum. Holly, swingers, nudists, kinksters, doms, subs, and those who are just curious about what a week at a sexy resort offers. We take all the best of the swing set, our values, our experience, our co-hosts, our community, and we bring it all together with the best resort staff on earth to create a queer, kink, and poly-friendly, consent-aware, and sexy-as-hell experience for everyone who joins us. To come with us on our Swing Set Takes Desire 2018 trip and hear us podcast about our previous trips, head over to ssdesire.com. We'll be there to welcome you home. That's going to be so much fun. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll take all kinds of lube for that. Oh, yeah. We'll probably have a suitcase full of lube. Lube and sunscreen. That's, lube that's, and sunscreen. Yeah. <laughs> what are, can you use sunscreen as lube? I would not suggest yeah, that. I I'm going to guess there's too many chemicals in that. But, you know, then it won't burn when you pee. It might burn going on. Wow. It might. That would be weird. Anyway. I don't know. So, uh, yeah. So, reach out to us. We, real quick, the, some of the folks that uh, – at Sexpo, which we will talk again about later. Yeah. But we had a lot of people coming up and talking to us, a lot of people coming and listening to our talks. We definitely appreciate it. There was a few of you that had come to talk to us, and we were either milling about, and uh, you just missed us. And I know the, some of the, the folks at After Dark had said a few people had come by, and yeah. it was just kind of a – we just missed. You know, yeah. We try and we missed. So uh, thank you for everybody who came out and, mm. and – talk to us and for the folks that came out and saw us and didn't talk to us you should have talked to us but uh, <laughs> yeah we know there's a couple of those as well don't yeah. be shy we're, we're just regular yeah. old people as well yeah so um if you want to reach out to us email us the atoms of love at gmail.com or you can find us on facebook instagram and the twitterverse at by the by podcast we are also now on OnlyFans. If you want to throw a few bucks our way uh, to help us out, it uh, just keeps us up and running. Websites, podcasts, and all that, they, they yep. do cost a little bit of money. And there will be some different content on there as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're trying to add some naughty, naughty things. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm editing now the shower, which is a, a video of you in the shower, which is fun to edit. It's hard to focus. 
<laughs> it's hard to edit a video with one hand. <laughs> I'm well, just saying. And I'm learning. I don't have a solution to that. I'm learning as well that I think I'm a bit of a of a narcissist because, like, I, I enter and then you know you start washing me off and I'm like, oh yeah, this porn just got hot. Well, I think it's just any guy. I mean, you know, not to belittle you or anything. You think any guy feels if, that way? If anybody walked in there, I think well, you yes. would have said that. Yes, absolutely. But I think it's more disturbing that it's me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Because <laughs> I, sh- I should feel like I shouldn't feel like that for me, but right. I could feel like that with any other guy. Okay. But uh, yeah, I think it's because I know what happens. And right. I'm like, I know where this is going. Yeah. Oh, That's fair enough. I know where that is going. Yeah. So yeah, it's pretty good. Anyway, so, uh, but I digress. So yeah, we're looking at putting that up hopefully in the not too distant future. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so also if you could leave us a review, that'd be great. We'd definitely appreciate it on iTunes, Stitcher. Wherever you find your podcasts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, if you have questions, comments, rude remarks, you know how to get to us. And uh, other than that, have a great week and we'll see you next time. Yeah. Thank you.